This is your Catholic Daily Journal for Saturday, February the 9th, 2019. Today in 1870, U.S. President Ulysses S. Grant signs a joint resolution of Congress which established a new agency as part of the Department of War with a mission to provide for taking meteorological observations at the military stations in the interior of the continent and at other points in the states and territories and for giving notice of the Great Northern Lakes on the seacoast by magnetic telegraph and marine signals of the approach and force of storms. Now that's a mouthful. The U.S. Weather Bureau wouldn't be a civilian organization until 20 years later when it was transferred to the Department of Agriculture and then on to Commerce and then to the ESSA and finally to its present home at NOAA right around its 100th birthday. The National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration has been on the cutting edge of radar and satellite technology for the last 40 years. It has my respect because of its unwillingness to produce politically oriented studies in exchange for grants, which has devastated the credibility of other national and international organizations in the fields of weather and climate. Today in 1964, in the early evening, 73 million televisions were tuned to CBS as Ed Sullivan introduced the British pop sensation The Beatles, who appeared on the show for three consecutive weeks singing I Want to Hold Your Hand. This was the beginning of the British invasion. The Beatles, the Rolling Stones, the Kinks, the Dave, Dave Clark Five, Herman's Hermits, and the Animals, among others, exploded on the U.S. music scene. This was only possible because U.S. rock and roll led by Elvis Presley, had invaded the UK in the late 1950s. Young groups in the UK mixed that sound with their own and the arrival of electric guitar effects pedals that introduced distortion, echo, and reverb paved the way for a return trip across the pond. The US market had become flooded with one-hit wonder bands that sold single songs on 45 records. The UK bands brought entire albums of music and new interesting beats and of course American girls have always loved a British accent. The late 1960s wave of activism and the Vietnam War stole attention from the music scene and the UK invasion ended as fast as it began. Today in 1971, Satchel Paige became the first Negro League player to be voted into the US Baseball Hall of Fame. Page was a righty pitcher who started out with a lot of heat, and so he stuck to fastballs and a few uninspiring curveballs. In 1939, he nursed a preseason injury, and he had to change his game a bit. He still threw a decent fastball, but he added a change-up to his line. As he experimented with that pitch, he stumbled upon an entirely new kind of delivery, which he called the hesitation pitch. And it involved moving his feet and elongating his arms over his head and adjusting the location from which the whip actually happened, and it was wildly successful. Page continued to experiment, and by the time he retired in 1966, he was famous for being able to throw basically every pitch in baseball, including a screwball, a knuckleball, and even the ephus, which is a kind of gimmicky slow pitch that's really hard to hit with any power or direction. Even more than his technical skill, Satchel Paige brought an infectious humor and a cockiness to the game. Famously, he would turn around to his infielders and have them sit on the ground while he threw three strikeouts in a row. He played from 24 to 66, and he was the first player who had played in the Negro Leagues to pitch in the World Series. And he was the first electee of the Committee on Negro Baseball Leagues to be inducted into the National Baseball Hall of Fame today in 1971. Finally, today is the feast day of Blessed Anne Catherine Emmerich, a German mystic and stigmatist who wrote two long books which she claimed were dictated to her by the Blessed Virgin Mary. The more famous of the two is The Dolorous Passion of Our Lord Jesus Christ, which Mel Gibson relied upon heavily for the screenplay of The Passion of the Christ in 2003. The Catholic Daily Journal is supported by listeners like you. For more information, visit catholicunderground.com. Until next time, be on the lookout for the Lord at work in your life.